Recently we spoke with Sam, Andrew, from his home near San Francisco, California. This is Sam. Hi, Sam. It's Jerry. Hi. Uh, let me get a quick level here if you talk for me a little bit. All right. This is Sam Andrew from Big Brother and the Holding Company, and right. I also played in Cosmic Blues Band. And, and okay. I, you know. All right, Jerry. All right. Will you talk a little bit about what it was like before Janice, before Janice Joplin became part of Big Brother? Because I know that there was a Big Brother and a Holding Company going down in San Francisco, and you were pretty important before she came around. Right. We Yeah, Big Brother was fairly well. There were... Know, five bands probably in San Francisco Jefferson Airplane, Grateful Dead, Quicksilver, Country Joe, and Big Brother. I, there are probably other ones, but you know, those got a lot of press. And you know, we'd been, we were, you know, a working band and all that by the time Janice came to us, you know, and uh, uh, famous, you know, in the Bay Area, famous regionally. Had a good draw, as they say. We had it. a good draw. <laughs> and then. Our manager, Chet Helms, who's from down your way, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, you know, said, hey, I went to school with this woman, you know, and it was, uh, she could she could really sing. She's like the real deal. She has a very authentic voice, and, you know, she sounds kind of like Victoria Spivey from Houston, Texas, and she sounds kind of like Bessie Smith and Big Mama Mae Thornton. You know, she has this really good voice, and she's working with a bluegrass trio down there in Austin right now. And, you know, uh, she has a rather wild lifestyle, but in her music and in her singing, she's very disciplined, and she puts in the time, and she has a work ethic, and, you know, she works up these real tight things with these people that sound very good, and, you know... What do you think? And we all said, bring her out here. You know, it sounds great, you know. And uh, he did. And she came and auditioned with us in June of 1966. And, uh, you know, we loved her, like, immediately. You know, a couple, Peter and James, had heard her before, you know, and they knew she was strong. And uh, I just thought she was really great, you know, from note one. Did you immediately get the sense that she was special? Yes, I did. I immediately got that. I got it before she opened her mouth because there's some people who, who, who just will walk into a room and Janice was kind of, and don't take these words the wrong way, but she was kind of tough and non-compromising, you know, but not impolite or rude. And it takes a special person to pull that off, you know, to... You know, it was kind of like she let you know right away she wasn't going to, you know, uh, overvalue any blandishments or flattery. You know, she was, uh, uh, you know, she just, there was always, there's always this guiding intelligence back there in back of her words and reactions, you know, and uh, uh, that was evident immediately, you know, and then when she sang, it was, it was incredible. It was really good. You know, it was really like, you know, it was like a folk record. It was like a Vanguard record or a Hooli label or, you know, it was just very good singing, you know, but in that folk style. I don't know what word you use besides the raspiness of her voice, you know. Was that immediately evident when she first started singing with you or did that develop as she... <laughs> well, she was doing... She was doing the. She she had her folk voice on. She had about seven different voices, but that day she had the folk voice on. So it had a real clear cutting edge to it, and it's hard to describe that. We try for it on guitar with various effects. You know, that'll that'll put this real nice sharp edge on a note, but at the same time, there's a little bit of graininess in there, and she had. That, that's what she had in her voice, you know. I think the, that's the word I was looking for, yeah, the yeah. graininess. Yeah. Well, and then later, now later, when she got tired, because we sometimes play two gigs a day, you know, we played every day for six months, then, you know, that rasp would come in there, you know, but... Uh, that's what I was wondering, how much of that was actually from 
you know, destroying her voice. Yeah, well, her, it's, I don't know about destroying, but overusing, definitely. I overusing. use that word too strongly, perhaps. Yeah. And I've heard rumors that she'd always drink a, a, a fifth or a pint of Southern Comfort right before she went on. Well, she, you know, it's not like she was isolated or a lonely individual. Everyone then got stoned. That's before, right. You know, yeah. We were all in our 20s, you know, and it was just like a typical thing that people in their 20s do. You now, know, what which, year are we talking right now? Let's, uh, uh, 66, 67. All of us were 24 to 26, I'd say, right in there. Peter was the youngest one. Then then maybe Janice was next. Then I was next. And then the drummer and the other guitar player were older. So you know. the band was partaking pretty much of the fruits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was they the were, but not... But not like anybody else, actually, at the same time. It yeah. Was kind of it, everyone was doing it, not, but not the bass player. He wasn't doing it. Oh. And, uh, he had a, he already had married and he had a child, so you know he was just naturally more responsible and and uh, you know he didn't do any drugs and he kind of, frankly he kind of missed the '60s a little bit. But he was he he was there at the beginning, but he had yeah. those other commitments. And, uh, I wonder if he has any regrets in that area. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I th- I think if anything, he's overly proud of that. You know what oh, I mean? Good. Good, good, yeah, good. It's hard to say. We, we pro- you know, uh, people all, often ask me, like, what what was it like? Wh- what would it have been like without drugs? And I can't say that because it wasn't without drugs, you know, but uh, it would be interesting to try those two well, experiments did you, side by side. Did you, I don't know if I should use the word often, but did you, uh, when you use it, often <laughs> perform while tripping on LSD? Well, no, it not, not a lot, but I did. I did. I know what it was like, you know. Yeah, that must be odd to stand in front of large crowds. Yeah, probably. <laughs> maybe I might have been the only member of Big Brother to do that. I'm not sure. I'm yeah. not sure, but I, I definitely did it. A few it did times. happen, and yeah. Was all the band doing hard drugs besides yeah, the bass player? Always excepting the bass player. Yeah, but he and had no uh, problem hanging out with you guys while you were hitting up? No, no, but we didn't show it to him, you know. You, I mean, we respected him. And, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's I hear you. exactly I, I We hear didn't you. show it to him, and uh, probably Janice the most, me the second, James, the other guitar player, the third, and Dave as is typical of him, way down the road, you know, two or three years later. And you know. some of that really, this sounds kind of funny because everybody's going to say I'm crazy, but some of that <laughs> is not really even your fault because where you were at in that time, it was readily available to, or made available to you, I would assume. I mean, because you yeah. were rock stars, everybody wanted to turn you on and get high with you, and you weren't going to say yeah. no and that kind of thing. And Yeah, that's right, but... Uh, you know, it, at the same time, we were working. We had a job. We didn't tune in, turn on, and drop out. We dropped in. You know, we had we had things to do all the time, including seeing lawyers and accountants and so on, you know, and you traveling. To, you had to mean a certain amount of coherence. Yeah, traveling takes up a large amount of time, and it requires you to be at somewhere at 7.59, not, right, you know, and right. so it's different, you know. So it was a more structured life than is generally supposed. Okay, and here's an off-the-wall question. Janice, Jimmy, and Jim Morrison, they're kind of the trio of uh, of all lost. Now, personally, I don't believe the stories that Jimi Hendrix died of a heroin overdose. There's even stories that, you know, John Lennon, too, that the CIA killed all three of them because they were just drawing a little bit too much of a crowd and they were that you, could be but I don't believe it but it could be I, you know I don't know I wasn't you don't subscribe to any of that no you personally think Janice just made a mistake one evening yeah that's what I think but I could be totally wrong you know I mean but you know nobody will really ever know yeah but uh, in your op- opinion it wasn't suicide no. or maybe a slow death I think anybody that does Heavy drugs is trying to kill themselves and probably didn't know it, but yeah. that's, again, my opinion. Janice, um, def- she picked the pace up when she joined the group? Did she change yeah. things? or did Yeah, she, she, was, she uh, had an idea of what she was trying to do, maybe more than we did. We were kind of in this thing for a lot of fun and as an experiment and kind of a 
conceptual art project. You so know? she and came in with a purpose. Yeah, she she had a purpose always, and it was the only reason I really am conscious of this is I'm music director of a play called Love Janice, and in that play, an actress stands up and reads her letters. You know, and it was really clear that even before you know she came to Big Brother, she was trying to be a professional singer and to make it as a career, you know, which wasn't in our idea at all. Well, she made, what, two trips out to San Francisco? Yeah. She went out there and then she decided she needed to go home and clean up her act. And, yeah. Or a bunch of friends pitched in and sent her home or something. Well, that's the story. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. then she found herself back out there again. So was she playing with you the first time she went out? No. It no, was the second time. Just in coffee houses. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. So Big Brother was known for their long guitar solos, and your dual guitar solos are, are legendary. And, you know, just, I mean, making what people, you know, just trip out on what you're doing and everything. And then when Janice came to the band, you, quote, unquote, got tightened it up a little bit yeah. to accompany vocals and regrettable? Were there arguments about anything? I mean, would no. Janice go, no, this is how it's going to be, or I'm not going to do it? Oh, no, 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 she never said that. You know, okay. she, she was a real real professional and a real musician. You know, she really enjoyed playing. She liked the long solos, and she played, you know, she'd play percussion instruments, and she really got into it. She would utter cries and so on that would propel the thing along. I mean, she was totally you know, bought into the whole thing that Big Brother was doing. But, you know, she is a singer, so, you know, she's going to sing one verse, then she wants to know, you know, where can I enter to do the second verse, and then right. when that's over, where can I enter to do the bridge? And So it was just a natural, prob- even, even if we would have never got a vocalist, that process would have probably happened, you know. I mean, it's just a natural, just tightening up of things, you know. So she didn't crimp your style any. No, not at all. But do you, do you feel that she uh, inspired you? Yeah, definitely. She inspired and enlarged. Yeah, and one thing, again, that she had in common with um, Jimi Hendrix and Jim Morris, and, and a lot of stars, really, for that matter, she could project her personality herself. Well, she's really bright, number one. You know, and anyone who's that is going to shine in a group setting. And uh, then she. God knows she was talented, you know. So, I mean, those two things in combination are really kind of unstoppable, you know. And everybody enjoys that, you know. You just want to be part of it. I mean, what's wrong with that? You know, you're in a group of people and someone who's really smart, you know, steps forward and leads the thing along. That's just fine, you know. Do you think that there's any connection between the three deaths? I mean, it just seems, you know, from a kid in Oklahoma sit home and seeing three of his, you know, it was almost like the day the music died, you know? Well, yes <laughs> and no. It depends how you mean that. Well, but, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I mean, know, like, Yeah, there's a connection. That whole generation was yeah. using drugs. That's the connection. And they were just in a position where they got... Yeah, there's no, of, you know, I would be totally amazed if we were part of some international terrorist conspiracy. conspiracy. You know, I just... It's too complicated. It, but it's also I mean. so coincidental. I mean, they weren't that far apart. And the, no, it was maybe within a month or something. But, it, you know, I, I you know so were a lot of people died during that it, month. Well, that's, you know, that's true. A lot of people in my phone book died during that month. And You think there just yeah. might have been some heavy stuff going around that day or something? Who knows? Yeah. What do we know, you know? Probably that. You know, yeah, if, okay, I never if you're going to make a like conspiracy. That. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about it. Somebody just, yeah, okay. You didn't think about that. Well, that the you, you know, there was a guy in New York who made it his crusade to provide pure heroin to people. You know, mm-hmm. and it was out of kindness or some kind of right. uh, impulse towards charity or impulse towards purity. <laughs> 